It is time for an election campaign. This election is a choice between moving forward or going back. Dealing with a health care crisis, an affordability crisis, and a UCP government constantly in crisis. It's a choice between a UCP government that will cut your taxes and make life more affordable, or an NDP government that will make you pay more across the board. This campaign is actually about giving families hope. I'm here to provide an update on the wildfire situation and the government's response to the ongoing emergency. We have right now someone who is uh, seeking to lead Alberta who um, has been found to have broken the law. We have to fight back against Ottawa. This, uh, this candidate will not. You want to fight with the media. You want to fight, frankly, with your former self. When you take a position of increasing business taxes, you're creating a lot of uncertainty. This is a person who, while well, started by bringing in the Sovereignty Act, an act that her former finance minister very clearly said was going to chase away investment. My friends here in this part of uh, the city of Calgary, I got to say the momentum is exciting. We know that we have got a, a tough fight in uh, in Calgary and Edmonton. Every single vote is going to make a difference on uh, on election day. Some key moments there from this month's Alberta election campaign where it all comes down to battleground Calgary. All right, we're going to bring in the power panel. Joining us from Toronto, Sharon Carr is a former deputy chief of staff to former finance minister Bill Morneau. Lisa Raitt is a former conservative cabinet minister, now the vice chair of global investment banking at CIBC Capital Markets. And here with me in Calgary, I'm surprised to find Brad Levine here in Cowtown. He's with Council Public Affairs and the Calgary Sun columnist Rick Bell. Rick, we meet in person for the first time. It's good to see you, gang. So well, much. good, to, good to see you. And I'm on with the real, you know, the big heavy hitters here. So well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in the game. Well, well, we're going to start with you because you got the home <laughs> ice advantage. Uh, what are you going to be watching for here in Calgary, Rick? Like the, the NDP have a tall task in front of them, 16, Very 17 big. seats. How do you see this playing out? Well, you know, they, they're they're without boring people. Uh, the the seats in North Calgary are ones they simply have. They just have to win so many seats. Right. Instead of three, they have to win like 16 to 18. That's a big run of seats for them to, to have. And I am not confident that's going to happen. Yeah, it, it, Brad, it, it's a tough ask, right, to go from three of 26 seats to 16, 17, 18 of 26 seats. Make the that's case right. for, your, for your cousins here. Well, it's, and it, so Calgary is very, very important. And I think everyone, all the guests so far on the show have said that. And I think most observers would say that Calgary is very, very important. So what I'll be looking for are those seats outside of Calgary that the New Democrats have been targeting to see for every one that they win on that column. Right. Then that, that's one fewer one in the city of Calgary among the 26. They don't have to win all 26. So if they pick up Lethbridge Eats, uh, then one down. If they pick up Banff Kananaskis, one down. Morinville, uh, in the Donuts, St. Albert, um, Spruce Grove. All, the, all of those ridings that they're targeting. Uh, just to interrupt, the e Donut is the ring around Edmonton. The ring around Edmonton. Edmonton. So the downtown core will go s very strongly orange. That's one of their, their, their main areas of strength. So as the night progresses, take one from their column, uh, which is outside of Calgary, that's one fewer. So yeah. more likely, I'm, I'm going to be looking for, uh, it, it, while it is, a, it is a, going to be a tall case to be made, right. it's not as tall as all 26 or even 19 or 18. So I'll be looking outside in rural Alberta, the Lethbridges, the Banffs, as well as the Donut. Lisa, what are you watching for here in Alberta as the results start coming in, and what do you make of the, the nature of the way this campaign is happening, this very polarized two-party political environment. You know what I can't figure out? I can't figure out what the ballot box question is. Honest to gosh, I mean, <laughs> one party seems to be running on the notion that um, if you elect this leader, she's a bad person. And another party uh, has something else that's going on in terms of how they're running. And, and they don't seem to, to meet in the middle even in terms of the crosstalk. So I think the dangerous part is that the voter is going to be out there deciding on their own what it is that there is important to them. And it may just come down to it's about the economy, stupid. And let's see whether or not that is what's going to cause people, number one, to show up to vote, and number two, to actually cast their vote for the, uh, for the, for the UPC. Yeah, Sharon, I, I, I don't know how, how you describe or define uh, the ballot box question, but certainly the themes have been the economy versus credibility, right? Like the referendum mm -hmm. on Daniel Smith and then the, uh, the, the warning of how bad the NDP is for the economy. 
Yeah, I think Lisa's yeah. right. I don't think there is a specific ballot box question. I think what truly is going to happen here is the NDP's ballot box question to voters is, do you want a Daniel Smith government? And the UCP's ballot box question for voters is, do you want Rachel Notley and, or as they're positioning Ottawa as your as your premier? So there isn't one true, I would say, um, as when Daniel Smith pr previously ran her leadership was vowing on the Sovereignty Act. Like we're not seeing any of that. We're we're seeing kind of a referendum on leaders at this point. So I think we're going to have to stick tight and see that because the attacks have pretty predominantly been on from Daniel Smith's side towards Rachel Notley and Rachel Notley towards Daniel Smith. So it's kind of the which leader is better at this point. Or which one's Rick, worse? how do you see it? Well, which is, is, there worse? A, is yeah. there a defining overarching issue? Yeah, no, I, no. I mean, the NDP focused on Daniel Smith. When they were polite, they said it was about trust. <laughs> when they were not so polite, they said she was basically, you know, a, a, a variation of crazy. Um, bozo eruptions, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in the campaign, that wasn't revealed because she stayed in the command module. She stayed connected to UCP mission control. And uh, she stayed on the script uh, as, best, uh, as best she could. But it is a long walk to go for some people to go from being conservative. Their whole life in Calgary voting, or in Alberta, voting conservative, to go over to the NDP. I'm not saying they don't do it. There will be people who do it. But it is a big challenge to make a walk that far. Now, they might also stay at home, but I hear the turnout's very high. So we'll yeah. see where that is. And, and because there is, the ballot question was only really a referendum, I think you mentioned this uh, before previously, yeah. a referendum on Danielle Smith, that makes it somewhat unpredictable. Here's what, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at what the seat count is. If it's 50, there, eight, there are 87, 87 seats. Yep. So for you people across Canada, if it's 50 or more, I'll, most people I think here will say, yeah, conservatives are in again. If it's 44 to 50 with a very narrow win, people are going, whoa, that's interesting because we'll see if Daniel Smith even stays on as leader perhaps because yeah. people will be very upset in the UCP that she depressed that massive conservative vote that badly. Mm -hmm. And if the NDP win tonight, whoa, ho, ho, it's, it's Old gonna, Testament time. You know, oh, it's, it's going to be, you know, wall, and the wall comes tumbling down. You know, the blue wall shattered. And, and so even though the pollsters are saying it's close, everything else, there's a lot of people on the street still saying the UCP will win because we have had decades right. of either progressive conservative rule or another party, the social credit, we're like conservatives. We had that big, you know, since the Depression, yeah. except for one term where the conservative movement was split. Now Humpty Dumpty's back together again. So a lot of people here, even if they're voting NDP, might expect, you know, they're bound to win. Yeah. So if the NDP win, this is big. I want to be back on tomorrow. That's big okay. news. All right, deal. If they win, we'll bring you in, yeah. and, and you, can, you can talk about the seas oh, boiling it will be as a big. It will be big. All right, Brad? This is okay. <laughs> But you would admit, Rick, that this, uh, under Daniel Smith, the United, uh, the United Conservative Party is not like the party of Alison Redford or no Don Eddy or Ed <laughs> Stelmack. So that's why no we saw kidding. two things. Two things that I think are important that we're, we're, we're hearing at the doors. One, conser uh, UCP candidates were saying to you, uh, con traditional Conservative right, right. voters, don't worry about Daniel Smith, just vote for the UCP, and she's likely, Bob even Ryan. if she wins... Even if she wins this election, she won't be around for much longer because, as they've shown in the past, the UCP caucus can take out their leader quite, yeah. quite well, That's quite an Alberta tradition. Premiers right. get one term and then they go. Or yeah. less than a term. Yeah. Well, it is only only term. Rachel Notley has actually followed through and, and actually finished a, a four-year term after being elected. Right. We, we, yeah, we had a premier who won over 70 right. seats and he didn't even finish a term. But right. the second thing that's also happening out there, David, is that... Former Lougheed uh, members of uh, right. Peter Lougheed's yep. cabinet, former candidates for the Progressive Conservative Party, they, they don't see a home for themselves no. in, the, in a Daniel Smith-led UCP. So they're also, and they're publicly going out there and endorsing Rachel Notley and the NDP. So there's a, there is a tradition of conservatism, right. but the UCP does not reflect 
that the classic conservatives but, and many of them now are coming to the NDP. Okay, hey, so, so Lisa, I want to bring you in on that. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. the old progressive conservative Albertan MLAs, cabinet ministers, deputy premiers saying you, you got to lend your vote to the NDP this time. But Pierre Polyev with Danielle Smith, Stephen Harper with Danielle Smith, doing endorsement videos for people like Tyler Shandro, who's in a tough fight in Calgary, Acadia. How do you think that dynamic of, of sort of the split conservative endorsements plays out? I mean, I think the endorsements that matter are, are the two that you mentioned, which is Pierre Polyev and Stephen Harper. I and mean, that's what conservatives yeah. are going to take a look yeah. at in terms of vouching for Danielle Smith. Everyone else, like myself, it, I'm a has-been, right? I mean, it's not, it's not a big deal. Those two are <laughs> leaders of the party, and those two are the ones that people will listen. I know that we all want to make this uh, uh, an election about Danielle Smith and about her leadership. I don't think it's about that, guys. I think it's always going to be about the economy. Right. And Albertans mm -hmm. are going to be trying to figure out who is it going to be best for me, my pocketbook, and my future in this province. Yeah, and Sharon, that was certainly the tack that the Conservative campaign took out here, that they really seized upon and focused on the Rachel Notley plan to raise corporate taxes from 8% to 11% and just drove that home and doubled down on it. And in their view, it seems to have been effective. Yeah, and I think that that is effective, but the, this is what happens when you when you have a party and you have a leader who tends to kind of veer off of what the general party would stand for. And and Danielle Smith is a very strong personality. She said a lot of things that I would say has turned a lot of traditional conservative voters out in Alberta off, which is why many have kind of said you got to give your vote to the NDP. Now there are people who will be fundamentally in support of the party. You see Stephen Harper, you see Pierre Polyev coming out in support of Danielle Smith, but I think it's less in support of Danielle Smith and more in support of UCP because partisan politics to them is probably more important to hold that ground. So as we've seen in Alberta, the leader can come and go, but the party is what they want to hold on to strong. Rick, Rick is that how you see it, the endorsements? I mean, how, how effective, uh, how meaningful do you think they are? Well, they're, you know, for the people who want confirmation, who want maybe a little extra comfort, they're leaning to the UCP already, and they voted for Kenny in the past. They may have voted for former Premier Prentice in the past right. and other PC uh, premiers of the past. It, it, may give, it may give a con confirmation for them. You know, it may uh, provide them with a little more comfort because, you know, there's been a lot of discomfort. <laughs> but, uh, but I think, the, you know, and they're really focusing. If Danielle Smith and the UCP win, this will be still a loss of many seats yes. mm -hmm. and a certain number of percentage points at a time when the economy is doing pretty well here. Affordability is an issue. And I, 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 it, it'll be interesting to see because when Jason Kenney and others put together the UCP, the reason was there's enough conservative voters, we can win forever. There's nobody who can knock me off this. And it's going to be sort of a dynasty right. again because they were a dynasty for so long. So well, as I say, if the NDP can break through that blue wall, it's going to be a national story big time. And, and Brad, we did, look, we had an NDP win eight years ago in 2015, but it was a three-way vote split then, right? right? And so that has taken away. And, you know, from my perch in Ottawa, this looks like the most polarized political environment in Canada right now, almost a Republican-Democrat type mm -hmm. divide mm -hmm. in terms of the way, the, where they win their seats and how they practice politics. How does the NDP come back against that, right? Because you don't have that advantage of the Wild Rose PC vote split, and, uh, and it, it, the path becomes so narrow, it just, can it be viable? Yeah. Well, you make the case, and I, I think they've been, they've, been, they've been making this case throughout, throughout the campaign, that if, even if you did vote for the Conservative Party in the past, whether it was a PC or Wild Rose, have a look at the current leadership. Who's in charge of it? Now, we've talked, we talked about the endorsements. We talked about... I'm not surprised that Pierre Polyev is supporting Daniel Smith. Okay, that's not a, What I am surprised is Peter Lougheed's former Attorney General supporting Rachel Notley. That, is, that makes me kind of sit up and go, wait a minute, what's there to look here? So you're trying to be a little bit interesting. Obviously, there's something, something going on within the culture. So, yes, it's going to be a narrow path to victory. But... What I also take a look at, you talk about what kind of caucus uh, and, and the, the kind right. of candidates that Daniel Smith, there's a lot of what I would call, so when Rick is talking about Jason Kenney bringing the PC and Wild Rose together in the lead up to the 19 election campaign, one big family. And there was Red Tories that ran and there was Wild Rosers that ran, you know, Brian Jean and those yep. folks. That was, a, that was a, a, a very difficult coalition that not even Jason Kenney could keep together for very, for very long. 
Now you take a look at who's left the party after Smith comes in. All of these, I would say, a lot of red Tories said, we're leaving. One termers, Sanya Savage, others like that. They left because they said, I don't see myself in this party. I mean, you tell me where, in what other political party would even if Daniel Smith wins tonight, her future as leader of the party is in is in right. doubt because her caucus has said on the doorsteps that they're going to knife her in the back once uh, once they get a chance. Right. So, Lisa, that that's kind of what I want to talk about next is is what's at stake for both of these leaders and what the future looks like for these leaders, depending on what happens. Because if it, look, it, Alberta Conservative premiers, even when they win, they don't always get to stick around. <laughs> if Daniel Smith yeah. loses tonight, that's almost certainly it for her. If Rachel Notley loses, what do you think? I mean, I, I, does it depend on the closeness of the loss? I mean, what's at stake for both of these leaders tonight in terms of their, their personal futures? So I think it's going to be a Rachel Notley decision if it doesn't go her way. And she, much like Andrea Horvath, will have to take a look at the situation and determine whether or not she wants to lead this party through another series of opposition days and, of course, into another election. Or is it time to pass the torch to somebody else? I think that's her decision. I don't know enough about what's happening on the doorstep that Brad was talking about in terms of whether Danielle yeah. Smith's caucus members are saying what they're saying. Who knows? I can tell you one thing, though. Winning solves a lot of problems. And if you win, your caucus becomes a lot happier. So we'll see what ends up happening out there. Um, out there. I say that from my Toronto-centric point of view. But we'll, we'll, end, we'll see what ends up happening. And it, it'll be interesting. And I just want to make one other point too, David. You know, you mentioned the term bozo eruption. The first time I ever heard that term was in the 2015 election. And it was John McKay, he used it in reference to Justin Trudeau. And the guy's still prime minister. So you know what? I went through an election where there was a big scandal on blackface. He still got elected. So you know what, guys? Lots of things go into, into the mix. Yes, uh, you, you are not wrong on that. And, and having been on the plane when that thing particularly happened, it, it crossed my mind, Sharon, when, you know, the... Uh, as Rick called it, the Hitler tape, you know, when that came out, there have been a series of things that have happened in this campaign that t in a typical sort of election will be disqualifying for a person, but yet here we are. So I just wonder, and it's sort of the same question I, I asked Lisa, is like, uh, who, what, what is the political future for the, for the leader who, who doesn't make it to the Premier's office tonight? So I think with Rachel Notley, if the NDP does not win, but say if they come in with a popular vote, I think it's Rachel Notley's choice, just like Lisa said. She's a pretty, I would say, beloved um, brand out in Alberta, specifically amongst the center-left-leaning individuals. Now, for Danielle Smith, anything less than a landslide, I think, is going to put her future in question. Let's always remember that Jason Kenney did not leave the leadership post with much less of a vote than she won uh, the, the actual UCP leadership with. So I think that anything less than a landslide for her is going to cause a bit of internal turmoil. We've already seen a bit of that before, but I think I think no matter what happens, I think as long as the NDP um, kind of comes out with what they want, um, none, nonetheless not winning necessarily, they will definitely have the choice of whether or not they want to keep Rachel Notley on her terms. But I think Danielle Smith has a lot riding here, and anything less than a landslide I think is going to be um, a potential disruption in the UCP leadership again. Rick, I had it suggested to me that, you know, a smaller caucus might not be that bad for Daniel Smith because 63, 63 is a lot of people to keep happy. And, you know, maybe 50 would be a lot better well, for yeah, her. But, but <laughs> if, if, if Danielle Smith and the UCP lose, there is going to be the mother and father of all dramas because yeah. she tied herself to a certain group in order to get the leadership. Yeah. And there will be... A re there will be all these conservatives who said, you blew it because you, who did you stick with? Them, those people. So suddenly the credibility of a certain wing of the party, they are going to be under great attack if she loses. And if she just wins in the 40s, the story does not end there because people tomorrow and the next day will say, hey, she only won like 40, you know, 47 right. seats, 48 seats. There could still be some argy bargy at that point if it's over 50 you know as as is as has been said a win might quiet yeah. quiet people down yeah, don't go throwing around technical terms like argy bargy here on the power panel right? <laughs> and, and by the way I, I, and by, and by yeah. the way i very rarely i meet people who say i'm a conservative i'm ucp i'm voting for ucp again you know i've yeah. always voted ucp i don't see a lot of people even come up to me and say you know what at least in calgary 
Daniel Smith rules. Yeah, yeah no, and motivate. So we, we just got a, a little bit of time left. I want to get your predictions, your sense of what's going to happen. So, Rick, you know, what do you, all predictions free or, you know, or your money back. I, I mean, what do you think happens tonight? What do you think we, we are looking at as an outcome? There's 87 seats. What does the legislature look like? Who's the premier? I, you know, this is a mugs game, of course, because none of us really sure. know, so we can yeah. pretend that we know. Um, I'm going to say she gets 50. She's Danielle. Danielle. Smith. Okay. Smith, 50. So 50, NDP, 30, 37. Right. Um, Somewhere around because, there. Because the NDP will make some inroads outside of Calgary and Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, you know, they'll have to win some really tough seats in Calgary to get yeah. closer than that. Yeah. Both, but but both. it could. But also, if you ask me, do you think the NDP could win? I would say absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. the NDP could win. Hmm. But if I was betting... Well, now I'm confused, yeah. Rick. No, 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 no. But remember, <laughs> Donald Trump had a 25% chance in 2016, and, you know, we had exactly. four years of Donald exactly. Trump, right? Exactly. So the NDP so, you know, could win. I'm just saying, if uh, I had to predict, right. I'd say 50. Brad, Brad, what do you think? Where, where, where do you know, think it landed? I'm going to agree with Rick and say that I think the NDP have a very good chance of winning. <laughs> Young people are key. So yeah. what are we looking for? Voter turnout, we've, we've seen the advanced polls, over 750,000 people have come out and vote. Whether that... It extends to a high high voter turnout. What it does suggest is that high voter turnout early in a campaign means that it's to the advantage of the challenger and not the incumbent because it's a change election. And right. people might be a little suspicious. Say, but I progressives, don't know. progressives like advanced polling too, I, and conservatives tend to vote in election. You know, yes. They don't want Absolutely. to take back Alberta yeah. to be running the legislature up in Edmonton for the people of the province of Alberta. So if young people come out, I think, I think Notley's got a path. We, okay. Uh, uh, Lisa, your, your quick uh, assessment of how you think this is going to go. I think Danielle Smith's going to be premier. I think she's going to hit the ground running. And advanced polls, I always felt, went in the conservatives' favor because they want to get their vote in, they know who they're voting, and it's done. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. So, you, well, how, what would you know compared to me? Oh, you just won office and we're in a cabinet position. I'm just a guy on TV, right? What do I know? <laughs> you make a good point. Sharon, what's your pick? Where do you think it's going to go? So, I don't want to sound like any of the pollsters out there who are hedging their bets. So, I'm going to go ahead and say I think the <laughs> NDP has a really good chance of taking it home, but I do think it's going to be closer a closer call than we expect, but I also want to look at the popular vote and where the popular vote's going to come because I think that's going to determine a lot about the future of both parties. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You could have Daniel Smith winning the popular vote, but if Notley threads that needle, she could end up, uh, you know, forming government, which you know is a little bit like the federal elections we've done the last little while. And, and, the, the, and, the, and the, the people who formed the UCP never would have believed we'd be talking about who is going to win the election at this stage. No, nope, that's this a wild stage. thing. That's right. All right, thank you for talking about it with me tonight, gang of Power Panel. I really NDP appreciate when it. When we come back tomorrow? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Rick Bell, <laughs> Brad Levine, Sharon Carr. Rick will be here. Rick will be here first thing in the morning. And Lisa Ray. All right, thank you so much, gang.